Sunday fast. As we begin our worship service by lighting the Advent candles and doing a scripture reading. So the Constantino family will begin uh, this morning with that reading.
would show up at church and sing the morning after their Sweet 16 party. So this girl was just like that. <laughs> Only the best. <laughs> Only the best. It's time for the children to come forward.
bless these children and help them to have a wonderful celebration of Advent and uh, prepare for Christmas. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, 
but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Eden Restored, Chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the ri river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God in the Lamb of the Lamb. Down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river, stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of, th of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will be there any curse. The throne of God and the land of the city and his servants will serve him. They will not see his face. Oh, they will see his face. And his name will be on their foreheads. They, there will be no more night. They will not need, they will not need the 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 light of the lamp, or the light of the for the sun, or for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Thank you, Lord.
much quieter this afternoon. <laughs> All right, we're thankful for it. Just it, it fills our hearts with gratitude. It's just such an awesome example of the way that God has blessed us. If we're sitting at a table that has people around it that we love most of the time and has lots of food on it that we love most of the time, it's really easy to feel like you know God has got to be real. I feel so blessed. This is wonderful. And in fact, sitting around a table and having a feast with loved ones is an image that we have from our faith tradition about what heaven's going to be like. People have described heaven as a banquet table where everybody's got a seat, where there's plenty of food, where we're eating with God, just like the disciples ate with Jesus during the Last Supper. Supper. That was, uh, it's an echo of that. It's also like a future echo of what heaven is like, sitting at a table together at a feast. Being able to sit around the Thanksgiving table and give thanks is a little slice of heaven. Heaven is what we're talking about this week on the very first Sunday of Advent, but also is the tenth in our series of uh, our, our Becoming series that we're preaching all the way through this year. We're talking about eternity and what heaven is like. And it's wonderful when we can have that experience of a little piece of heaven here on earth, like that Thanksgiving table. I'll tell you what I'm thankful for also, though. It's for, not only just for a piece of heaven that we can experience, like we may have on Thursday with our family and friends, but I'm thankful for a vision of heaven given to us by John, the very end of the Bible in the Revelation, a vision of heaven that nobody has ever seen. I'm thankful for that vision because it tells us that there is something out there that we cannot imagine in the future that is so good and so beautiful that there's no way that we can experience it here. And that is so important because there are many times where we don't feel as hopeful, where we don't feel as blessed, where we don't feel as thankful. It's great if we can have the time around the table like we did on Thursday and say, God loves me, and, and God must be real, and we just feel full of faith and hope. But there have been times for every one of us, and I'm looking at you in this room and knowing you and knowing your story and knowing me and my story, there have been times in the last week or month or year or a couple years when you weren't feeling very blessed at all, when you just got hit out of left field with something pretty scary and pretty unexpected. And in that moment, you said, oh my gosh, I just, I, I just got a, a health scare and a health diagnosis. I, a relationship that's so important to me just broke in ways that I never expected. My child is suffering. My parent is suffering. We just went through an election for a lot of people. It's difficult, right? My job just went away. Whatever it is, and you're thinking, what sort of universe am I living in right now? This doesn't even feel like a place that, that God has blessed. I feel like I'm in an alternate reality. You raise your hand if you have felt that way in the last year. Okay, good. Because I have to. And it's in those moments that we can't rely on our personal experience of I feel God's love and God's blessing right now. But we need things like a compelling vision of God's future for us revealed in the scripture to say, you know what? Even though right now, I feel like everything is sideways, I know what God has told me about the future. And it is more beautiful and more perfect and more holy than I could ever imagine. I am thankful for this vision and revelation. I want to go through it just a little bit for you because the symbolism in it is awesome. But before I do, this scripture... This revelation was given to John of Patmos, not the apostle uh, disciple John, but a different John, who was on an island by himself during a time where Christians were being persecuted. This is one of the later writings in the New Testament. And Christians had begun to be persecuted. And so these are not the Christians who are sitting around the Thanksgiving table saying, oh, God is so good, I feel so blessed. These are the Christians saying, my life just got knocked sideways and I'm frightened and I don't know what the world is going to bring me tomorrow. He received this revelation and he gave it to the church to encourage them about their future. These are Christians who have to be silent and have to be underground about being Christian. 
who can't just practice their faith out in the public like they can now? Can you imagine living in a culture where people, if they knew your faith, might target you? Can you imagine living in a culture where if your faith were known, you might get put on a list or a registry, and you might feel threatened that your faith and your name were on that list? What a terrible place that would be. And yet that's where they lived. And so John said, I want you to take heart. And I want you to see what God has coming for you. The heavenly city, the new Jerusalem, coming from heaven like God. Throughout the whole thing, if you were imagining with your mind all the precious sto stones, by the way, that uh, Lauren read like a champ. I thought that the Hollywood was going to take those, <laughs> those hardware amethysts and jazz from your crystal. Yeah. She did great with that. Um, gold, right? I want you to notice that all of these precious stones, these metals, these elements that we are hearing in this scripture, are all products of a refiner's fire. Either the refining fire of the, the rock formation process on earth or of a metalsmith. That these are all pure elements. And in the interpretations that I read, there is no chaff. There is no easily destroyed thing in this city. But it is all these precious gems that are made only through the force of incredible heat and pressure. This is what arrives in the heavenly city. You heard about the 12 gates, three on each side. There's uh, north, south, east, and west, 12 gates. All of you in here know about the number 12 regarding the scriptures, not only the 12 uh, tribes of Israel, which are represented here, but the 12 apostles. And so we see both the Jewish tradition and we see the Christian tradition wrapped up in this vision of heaven. But not only that, because the gates face north, south, east, and west, it is an inclusive vision of the whole world gaining access now to the city of God. 12,000 stadia in length. You know, um, uh, Sean Wyatt, I'm just going to call you out for a second, because you're a construction guy. And I was like, I wonder if Sean is listening to the specs on this project and wondering how much cement it would take to, to fill it. Do you know how long a stadia is? Anyway, where's Noah Spicer when you need him? It's like 182 meter, meters. Okay? Stay, uh, stadium. Stadium. Well, that's Kevin. Yeah, Kevin might know. Kevin? No. Okay, well, now you do. 182 meters. I didn't know it either. I had to look it up. 12,000 stadia is about 1,500 miles on a side. This holy city. You know, in my imagination, when I just was reading this verse, not knowing what a stadia was, I thought, maybe this is the size of, I don't know, the field down in North Reading High School. You know, it's kind of big. No. This is, this is unfathomable. A city, 12, 1,500 miles on a side. This way, this way, and tall. A perfect cube. Each of the gates, one pearl. Oh! The pearly gates. Here they are. That's where they come from. I didn't want you to miss it, because actually to me, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, pearly gates. I get it. Okay, it's kind of about it. And no temple in this city. There is no place that needs to be designated as, this is the holy place, like church. We go here to be more holy, to think about God a little bit more, to like regain our focus. We come into these four walls, and it really helps us. But in the city, the whole place, is a place of worship. There's no one place that is nearer or farther from the presence of God. There's no sun or moon because all the light comes from the light of God. And then it gives us an image of trees and a garden and a river that should sound familiar to all of us from the book of Genesis, from the creation. This is creation restored. God's original intent of a beautiful garden with life-giving trees and a river flowing in it with people and God in face-to-face -face relationship. But now, because this is God's ultimate victory, because this is God's ultimate plan, there is no sin. There's no temptation. 
There's no harm. We're told in a different section, there's no tears, there's no weeping, there's no crying. In fact, the tree is the tree of life, and the leaves, instead of that fruit being something that caused harm, the choice to eat that fruit, now the leaves are used for the healing of the nation. It says, they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. On their foreheads. For people who are living in fear of others knowing the faith that they practice. For people who are afraid to show an outward expression of their faith. Now, their faith can be written on their foreheads. And they will reign with God forever and ever. I am thankful for this beautiful and absolutely otherworldly vision of God's plan for the end of history. When we have moments in our life that are awesome and grace-filled and we're like, God loves me and I feel so content and so blessed, that is wonderful and that's a slice of heaven. But we need this too. We need this too, because sometimes our life on earth does not have that many experiences of heaven. And we need to be able to hold on to where God is going with us. As people of faith, we believe that history has a destination, and we believe that this is our destination. For this, especially this weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, the first weekend in Advent, I am thankful. Daniel Schindenbarger is back home in Illinois this weekend with his family, and I'm just grateful uh, for the talent God gave Joey to be able to jump right over onto the piano. And Wesley jumped into your seat on the drums. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Let's pray for our offering. Lord God, you have given us so much to be thankful for. And beyond that, Lord, when times are difficult, you've given us a vision for the future. We're so grateful. We ask that you would receive our offering today as an expression of our thanks, that you would bless it and multiply it to your service in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
afternoon, uh, the Town of Common, the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, is putting on a tree lighting festival. Totally secular. It's all Rudolph and Frosty and stuff like that. That's fun. Fine. They light the tree at 4.15. And at 4.30 at the gazebo, uh, the clergy in town are providing a retelling of the actual reason that we celebrate Christmas. Uh, so please come for the tree lighting. It's from 2.30 to 4.30. And then immediately following for about 15 minutes, uh, we can hear the story of Mary and Joseph and Jesus. If you ordered a wreath, they have arrived. Bob Kingsley will be standing by the back door of the church. He will take money from you if you have not paid. Uh, he will help you get your wreath. I think we have two extras. So if you want one, you can order one. We've got one for you. They are $24. Thank you for ordering the wreaths. There are still uh, tags available for the um, food pantry family's gifts on the missions table in the back, a little half moon table. If you'd like to take a tag, they are due back here next Sunday, unwrapped next week. Pastor Johnson wants to invite uh, youth of this church here December 18th from 3 to 6 for a youth rally, and he'll be in touch with more information but I just give you that bit of information as well. Finally, the North Bend Community Chorale is giving their holiday concert in this space Saturday night, next weekend, and Sunday afternoon. I have tickets if you're interested, or you can reserve them uh, to be uh, received at the door with your payment. Either Friday, or excuse me, Saturday at 7.30 or Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. It's going to be wonderful. For celebration and thanks, a couple of them. Oh, one more announcement. Um, if you would like to order a gift card from a million different places, at so many different places, um, the Venture Crew is selling them at face value, but they receive a cut of that as a fundraiser. See Bonnie, a Spicer, or Amanda Carr if you want uh, to order a gift card. For celebration and thanks, we have two. Um, oh, yes, go ahead, Dante. Yes, thank you. You first. No, they first. Oh, I, I don't know if you guys covered it, but um, we're working on the pageant, and if your child's in the pageant, they're, they're, today they'll be given a schedule and the script with their lines, so look for it, it should be in, in their hands, so that way they can take home kind of look at it. Thank you. Anything else in that panel? No. Thank you, Dante. All right. Thank you. So look for pageant information from your kids. Thank you, Cindy. Dante? If you did not sign up for the Advent meetings, we still have two openings available. Next Sunday, if you would like to do the Advent meeting, we'd love to have you do it. And also Christmas Eve, that is also available if you'd like to help and be part of the festive time of year. Also, points that order points out in our text, or whatever you want to call it, either way, the form is out there. It is $10 for points set to be donated in memory of, but you can take home at the end of the night. Uh, the form is out there as well. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dante. Writing it all down, it will also be in the church email. Okay. For celebration and thanks, uh, Dante, right back at you. Dante built this beautiful new table for the Advent week. We appreciate it so much. It's even on rollers, so we can move it all around. So we appreciate Dante for that. Also, Fisher Kids and Vinny Costantino for helping to move the Christmas decorations this morning. Let's give them a hand. Be with us until we meet again in the name of the Father and the Son.